Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. This video today is part of the Close to My Heart Twisted Sisters YouTube hop where we take something from the new catalogue. In this instance it's the July, August, September seasonal catalogue and we twist that product into something that you might not expect it to be used for. Yesterday Katie and Tina kicked off the YouTube hop so go and check out what they have done and today it's Sandy's and my turn to do it and then there will be others following after this for quite a few days. There will be a playlist linked below in the description so you can check everybody's videos out as they air. What I'm using today is the Beach Party Scrapbooking stamp set and thin cuts. The good thing about all of our stamp sets is that they are available without the thin cuts. Not all of them have coordinating thin cuts but when they do you can buy the stamp set as a standalone. You don't have to get it with the thin cuts. For today's video the item I'm going to be twisting is actually a thin cut from this set. You can see that some of these, pretty much all of them, have been shaded in a blue colour which means they have a coordinating thin cut. So I'm going to be using this thin cut here and I'm also going to be using some gloss sprays. These are in our current core catalogue so they are available until the end of August but after that the gloss spray range is changing a little bit. So if you want any of the current colours that we have, it's all while stocks last, I'll put links below to everything that I've used today but if you're wanting to get the range of colors that we have now I suggest that you go and take a look at those before they all disappear. For today's video I'm going to be creating an art journal page so I'm going to bring in my splatter box and I'm also going to spread out some of an all-purpose mat that I have cut up that's my old one I've cut part of that up and I've actually got another piece of a box that I have cut up that I put up behind that. And then I'm just putting my Distress Watercolor paper. This is fabulous for doing art journal pages on if you're going to be using water or a lot of gloss spray and doing a lot of layers on it. What you need to do for these gloss sprays is give them a very good shake. You'll hear the bead going around, but when you look at the bottom of these, there's sort of a chalky residue. So you wanna make sure that that's all gone before you start spraying. And my background for this art journal page is going to be blues and greens. So what I'm going to do is just spray this I want a fairly good coating of the color. I don't want any of the white to come through. And the thing that you need to remember to do is as soon as you finish spraying, get a baby wipe or a wet wipe and clean the nozzle off. Now I'm going to go in with the turquoise. And I'm just layering that up and remembering to wipe it off. So I'm really pushing the white into where the spray and the little hole part is there to make sure it's all nice and clean. And then I'm going to come in with Ocean. And I want to add some more colour in around this area up here. It's not an exact science when you use sprays. I just want to make sure that I've got a good distribution of the colours. If you just gently hold down the pump and give a little squirt, you get these cool little splatters happening. So you don't have to push the nozzle down all the way to get an effect. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and then I'm going to add a couple of other layers of colour because I've got some white coming through here and I want this to be nice and solid and I'll probably add some flicks to this as well. As you can see, I've cut a few white daisy, just regular white cardstock, not watercolour cardstock. And I've used the surfboard die cut, which is intended to be used with this stamp here. So you can stamp the time to relax, you can colour it all in, and you can create your own surfboard with it. But I'm just using this shape. And you can see I've got some Distress Oxide inks all laid out here ready to use. And I'm going to blend each one of these. I'm going to start with Spiced Marmalade. And then I'm going to move on to a Mustard Seed. 
And then I'm just going to bring in some scratch copy paper because I want to go to squeeze lemonade and I want to just rub this mustard seed off a little bit. So normally what I would do is have a production line going and I would start with spiced marmalade and ink up all of these and then move on to mustard seed and do all of those in one go and then come back and use squeeze lemonade. But I don't want you to have to sit through me doing what is going to be pretty much the same thing throughout this whole process for these pieces. I'm just going to show you the one and then the magic of video will make all of these happen and you won't have had to sit through it all. So you can see I'm blending the colours up a bit more. I'm using a bit of a lighter hand now. I'm not pressing so much as I did when I was down near this section and I just want to bring in a little bit more of that spiced marmalade and then I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to go right around the edges as well just to create a little bit more depth and then I'm going to come back in to make sure I get the heavier mustard seed off that and then I'm going to come back in with the squeezed lemonade and then the mustard seed just to blend that out a little bit so you can see I'm going back in again with the spiced marmalade to add a little bit more of a softer glow around this section And then I think I will deepen up this area at the bottom just a little bit more with some vintage photo and go back in with spiced marmalade to blend that down just to give it a bit of a richer tone down near the bottom. And the reason why I'm using Distress Oxides is because I know that I want to add some flicks to this. I was going to just use the water brush, but I think I might bring in a gold shimmer brush for this. So I'm just going to give this a shake, make a little puddle and flick that on. And you can see that it's reacting with the Distress Oxides. It's bleeding it out just a little bit. And I'm quite liking how that's looking, but I think I do want some water as well, just to add some really, really cool textures. Now you can let the water just sit on that and do its work or you can get a paper towel and you can tap it off. But for me, because I've already put the gold on there, I'm just going to let the water do its work and set these aside to dry. I'm going to add in some more gold shimmer brush. I'm going to hold this up to the camera so that you can see, hopefully, with the lights and everything, how much shine there is on that and I'm really loving how that is looking. So I'm going to set this one aside to dry and then go ahead and do exactly the same treatment to all of these other oval shapes. This is my piece that I sprayed earlier and it's not quite dry yet but as I'm looking at it and I'm holding this piece here I want more of a contrast. So I'm actually going to bring in night and deepen this up a little bit more. And I'm not quite squeezing all the way down. If I squeeze all the way down, I get more of a concentration of colour. But I do want some splatters and I want this to just deepen up so that when I put these pieces on, it's going to give more of a contrast. But you can see that the lime and the turquoise is still shining through. So normally I take these off and I give them a flick with the straw, but I'm loving how just with a gentle squeeze, I'm getting those splashes of colors. You can use a heat gun on this, but I'm just going to set this aside to dry overnight and then I'll be able to make sure that it's fully dry before I do any more treatments to this. All of the surfboards have been inked up and splattered with water and gold shimmer brush and then I've added another little treatment to them. I've gone way back into my stash universal backgrounds. I tried to find something a little bit more current, but I couldn't find the words. But I think most of us have these texture type stamp sets or background stamp 
stamp sets and I hang on to them because I do love them so much and they come in handy for quite a lot of things. I'm going to use archival black ink throughout this project because I'm also going to stamp on top of my page here. This is all nice and dry now and I think with the lights you can see the shine from the gloss sprays. So I love how that turned out. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just ink up a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just getting some of the words onto the surfboard. I didn't want to completely cover the whole thing. I just wanted sections of it. So I'm also using this same stamp image to put some areas of words onto my background piece. Now, this is quite shiny and slippery. So the archival black I've found is quite good for this. I don't need it to show too much. It's just to add a little bit of texture. And I'm going to be putting all those surfboard pieces down in this area here. So I know I don't need to cover any of that at all. And then I'm going to speed up this next process for you because I'm going to do some more stamping on these. I've got the embroidered circles, which are in the current core catalog. So I've mounted those onto a block. I'm gonna stamp these two at the same time. I've got this grid pattern from Perfectly Imperfect Patterns. And I've also put on this long block two of the embroidered borders. All of these sets are currently available in the annual core catalog until end of August or while stocks last and then they will be retired. These stamp sets are not just fabulous for doing art booking pages, they are also wonderful for putting designs on scrapbook layouts, all sorts of things. So you can see I'm just putting a few of these around and I wanted to speed up the process a little bit by putting the two circles on at the same time and layering them over each other. And you can see that's creating a great effect and I'm loving what this is doing to the layout and how it looks. That's all the stamping that I'm going to do for this, but now I'm going to go around all of the edges with archival black ink just to deepen them up a little bit and finish this piece off. I've cut an espresso circle using our circle shaker window thin cuts. I've just used the inside piece of that and I'm going to deepen this up a bit with some vintage photo because I want a nice rich tone to this. And then I'm just going to bring in some black ink and this little stencil here, this is one of the stencils from the core catalog and I'll list which one it is below, but I'm going to ink through this and put some circles or little dots over this piece just to give it some added texture. And you may have already guessed what I'm doing with this. I'm not sure if you've worked it out yet with the shapes that I have cut with the surfboard. But I want to add some more depth to this. So I'm just going to put some black soot around this section here just to make it a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to go back in with Vintage Photo. And the reason why I did this with the Distress Oxide inks is because I did want it to react to water a little bit and also to the gold shimmer brush. So I've got all my pieces done. Now it's just a case of arranging them on the page. And you may have already guessed, as I mentioned earlier, that I'm creating a sunflower with these pieces. So I'm just layering these around and roughly positioning them before I adhere them with some liquid glue. So I'm going to have it coming off the edges and out from this corner, and then I'll just get some liquid glue and start putting all of this together.
And then I just need to put a little bit of word art on the page. I got out the Joyful Sunflower. This is still available at the time of me doing the video. I love all the sunflowers on here, but I really wanted a bold statement with this and I wanted to create something using this one thin cut. But the sentiments in here are quite good. So I thought I would use Choose and Sunshine. So I've already stamped those. And for the sunshine, instead of doing stamp surgery and trying to cut this apart because the little tails of the wires are quite close, I just put down a post-it note and stamped over the top of it so that I would have this piece here. And I also need to add in the black edging to where I've trimmed off this sunflower piece just to finish it off. And you can see how that's making everything look very cohesive and bringing it all together. And because I can't leave it alone, I'm just going to bring in my Jelly Roll white pen and just add some little features to this just to finish it all off and dress it all up. And then I'll probably do some white splatters as well. My finished art journal piece I actually added in some of the white gloss spray and the gilt gloss spray because I couldn't help myself I just thought it needed a little bit of extra sparkle so I've actually used six gloss sprays on this project but I think it all works really really well the important thing to remember when you're doing a project like this make sure there is definition between your focal point and your background so I haven't used yellow or oranges at all in my background so that my sunflower will stand out and all of this is created from one little surfboard die cut. So when I saw this, I knew that I had to make a sunflower. And just a reminder, this is part of the Close to My Heart Twisted Sisters hop where we take something from the July, August, September catalog and twist the use of it so that it's used for something other than what it's originally intended for. Following me are Amanda and Miranda. So make sure you click the playlist below. And did you know you can actually save the playlist? So you can just come back and watch whichever ones you want to watch over and over again to get some tips and techniques on how to twist something from what its intended purpose was into something totally different. I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this art journal page and I look forward to seeing you next time. Happy crafting and bye for now.